Yes, we are back onto my Rust Bucket Seat Leon Cupra Mark II that I'm doing sort of a restoration on. Kind of didn't plan to do this, but the further I'm getting, the more I seem to be doing. So let's just check out exactly what I've done so far. And if you haven't seen the last video, please click in the top right hand corner. So yeah, you can see I've got a bit of the yellow and really rusty floor, and that's because I've been poorly painting wings and also de-rusting the underside of the rear end of the Leon. Now, I'm at a point now where I've got all the rust off that I can that's like kind of flaky. Um, I have bought some rust converter. So this is why I like getting your guys' opinions in the comments before I go too far, which is one of the reasons why I stopped the last video when I did, because before I went any further with that, I like to see what people say in the comments. And in this case, loads of people were saying about Rust Converter. I'd never heard of it before. It's not like I've done a restoration before, so I'm new to this as well. And uh, yeah, so I bought some Rust Converter, so I'll be painting the whole underside of that, which basically just converts the rust into uh, a stable compound to prevent it from deteriorating any further, basically. And then once that's on, we'll let that cure, and I've also got some under seal to put on top of that. So that should be then the rear end nicely uh, restored for, well, it's going to outlive the car let's be honest so waiting for that to turn up i've just off camera dropped the downpipe and as you can see it, the flexi was split in two places at the top and the bottom of the flexi i have a new flexi that i bought because i don't know if i mentioned the last video a standard exhaust even second hand i interrupt this video to let you know that my audi s3 is now on competeforcars.co.uk website up for raffle go grab a ticket click the link in the description there's about two and a half thousand tickets left the last time i checked Go grab one, and one of you guys can win the car for just £1.99. Uh, because obviously there's two cats. There's a pre-cat and a secondary cat, or a main cat and a secondary cat. It's like 300 quid just for a second-hand one. Um, so I've bought a flexi for like 20 quid, and I'm hopefully going to weld that in to replace the damaged flexi there, uh, therefore keeping the rest of the system. And then we've got a Scorpion cat back as well, which will be going on uh, the end of this at some point. So just looking, I've also cleaned up the heat shields as well, so it looks kind of nice there. Um, hopefully this rear end with the underbody sealer we, uh, will be completely transformed. And then we've got my wings here. I did put an Instagram story on. I did paint them yesterday, but I realized that my uh, when it, the clear coat wasn't going down very well, it was leaving kind of like splodgy, splodges in places and it was hazy and wasn't going on properly. Um, I realized that my clear coat was actually four years out of date. So as you can see on this one, I've just sanded the clear coat back off it. Um, and I've just put some primer around the edges because when I sanded it, it went back to metal. So uh, I've literally just primed all the edges. I need to sand it down again to get rid of this overspray here on the primer. And then I'm going to do another base coat and then prime it, uh, clear coat it again once my new clear coat turns up. So uh, yeah, that was a bit of a fail yesterday as well. So whilst we're waiting for the rust converter, I'm going to crack on with one of the jobs I really don't want to do, and that is trying to weld up a new flexi into there. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to do this. As long as there's no holes, it doesn't have to look pretty. So yeah, let's give that a go. Uh, not looking forward to trying to get the downpipe off though, although it has been made easy by the fact that most of the exhaust is on the floor. So let's whip that out, clean it up, get it on the bench, and see how good I can weld with an electric welder. Now, because I don't have four wheel drive or half my exhaust system present, it's actually quite easy to get access to the bolts. Now, there's four bolts that hold the cat onto the turbo. All I've got to do is remove them. And three of them I could get to from the bottom of the car, but there's one that's at the back of the turbo that I need to get from the top. And to do that, I need to take out the intake system, intake pipe, and I can just about get down there with the extension and a 17 mil socket and undo that last remaining bolt. But they all came out absolutely fine. Well, I've just removed the last bolt for the downpipe. <laughs> Again, come off way better than I expected. Really happy with that. But before we put it back up in the air, I just test fitted my near side front wing that I've got to repaint. But I'm really happy with the colour match. I mean, actually, I don't know how it's come across the camera, but if you get the right light look, it's really good match. So down there. I mean, don't forget this door is dirty because I've got a load of uh, rust dust on it. But if you look at the right angle, the match is spot on. Really happy with the color. So again, get the right angle look, it looks identical. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how that's gone. Annoying because it actually doesn't look that bad once it's on the car, but I want to do it properly and I am going to just repaint it. So with all the bolts off now, it literally just pops off and I opted to remove the connector for the O2 sensor instead of trying to remove the O2 sensor itself.
So I've got my new Flexi here, and as you can see, just about the same size, but we have two additional bits to actually clamp it on if we wish, instead of weld it on. But what I think I'm gonna do is weld it on one side and clamp it the other. And that is purely because, because it's all broken in both places, I don't know the exact orientation of the downpipe. So obviously it has to be bang on for the exhaust to fit in the right place. So we have to weld it in the exact right place. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that because of how badly damaged it is. So what I was thinking is if I just weld it this end and then we've got a nice sort of inch and a half, two inches here of leeway and I could use that to clamp it on. And by doing that, it gives me movement down here to get it spot on and do the clamp up. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. So we just need to clean up, well, not that. We need to clean up all this, probably cut it off here, look cut off that existing weld and weld it on like that. And then again, cut off the existing weld here. And hopefully it's a similar size to go uh, sleeve on or do something and uh, yeah, clamp it on. I thought it'd be weird to have nine seconds of music playing here. So I've just imported a grinding noise to fill the awkward silence. So here we go, look, just off camera quickly. I've just banged a clamp on it and it looks spot on. The exhaust fits nicely under the heat shield, so that looks good. The clamp's not actually too intrusive, too big, uh, so it looks absolutely fine. And yeah, absolutely solid. So happy with that. Spang the downpipe back on. I think I'll have to cut, ah, oh, that's annoying. I think I'll have to cut some of that off. It needs to be sort of that high. It'll work. But I need to cut a little bit off. That's annoying. Now I turn my attention to one of the rear hubs and again, really, really rusty. I found the best way to get a lot of the rust off was just to keep hitting it with the hammer and it just breaks the rust off and it falls off, especially with all the tight angles and the connectors on there. It's just quite, I didn't want to get a chisel in there and break anything, especially the ABS ring, etc. So I found just hitting it with the hammer was the best way to do it. And then we need to just break down the, um, the hub by just removing the disc, caliper, caliper carrier, and yeah, try and protect that ABS sensor and ABS ring. And finally, after doing loads of, oh, look at this place, absolute mess, doing loads of different jobs because I've been waiting for my rust converter to turn up, it has finally turned up. So yeah, rust converter, I don't know much about it. You guys told me to do it. Uh, it makes sense. It basically neutralizes and inhibits rust and stops it from basically getting any worse and turns it into a stable compound. Um, so we're going to, well, I'm going to paint this now all over the rusty areas on the, on the car. Uh, and then we can, once it's painted, I can then spray it with a body under sealer and that should then protect it for, as I keep saying, definitely the remainder of the car's life. So let's crack on, get it painted so we can get these rear axles on. So I get it on the floor and get it off the ramp and start doing other things as well as this car. So I've just put the second coat of under sealer on and yeah, it is very, very black. I mean, I think it's going to dry a bit of a matte color because it was starting to go a bit matte between second coats, but yeah, very black indeed. So waiting for that to dry. Once it's dry, we can start putting the subframe on and then we can start obviously coming off the subframe and building up the rear axle. I've also just fitted my brake pipe connectors there. Look, you can see. 
I will show you how I did that um, in a moment. I was just doing it because it's the first ones I've ever done and I wanted to make sure I could do it first before I teach you how to not do it, if that makes sense. Um, so they should come out fine. So yeah, I'll give it, well, I think it's about another 40 minutes until it's dry and then we'll bolt the subframe on. Right, I've just been slowly concentrating on one side and building up the offside rear here. And I'll tell you what, it's, I mean, I've, I've been saying it, but this is a time consuming job. Um, and yeah, it's not as easy as I probably first thought. Quite a lot of variables in this. There's just loads of adjustment everywhere. So it's obviously gonna need a four wheel alignment and geometry setup once it's done. Um, but for now, yeah, I'm just getting everything in place. Got the hub now. So we've got our bearing in place there. The next thing I'm gonna concentrate on is getting uh, the brake caliper on. Because um, if you can see up here, we've got a brake pipe, which obviously I had to cut. It's in there, look. So I've already got my new fitting on it. So I need to now make a brake pipe up that goes from that to the braided hose. Well, I think it just goes straight to the caliper. I can't remember now. Um, but that'll be next on the list. And also we should have some new rear discs and pads to fit as well. I actually had some rear discs and pads left over from that Mark V GTI I did a while ago. I never needed to use them in the end because the brakes on them were fairly new. And I had an inkling they might fit the Cupra. And luckily they did fit straight on. So that saved me about 120 quid on new rear discs and pads. Right, so I fitted the brakes. Um, my preference is I'm going to leave the calipers like that because the new owner of the car may not want them in red, may want to paint them a different colour. So I'm just going to leave that. Uh, as a small job for the new owner. Um, but brake line's all in, nicely secured on a subframe with the original clip as well, when I'm fine. Uh, what I've now got to do though, is get my new bit of brake pipe. So if you can see it, where is it? Here, and I need to join it up to the bottom of that. Never done this before in my life, so I'm gonna completely wing it as I normally do and just guesstimate for the minute. See how it goes. So I actually used a length of cable tie to kind of mimic how much cable I'd need and use that to then cut it to length. Uh, once I've done that, it's crimp the ends, flare the ends, get the connectors on. Luckily, I've got my three-in-one tube bender, but copper pipe's quite easily manipulative as well, so I could bend it with my hands in points also. So yeah, I don't know if you saw there from my time-lapse uh, footage for the brakes. Basically, I just bought, I went on Amazon and bought a kit that does all like brake pipe repair. So it gave me the copper pipe, gave me a three in one tube bender, uh, gave me a tube cutter and um, a tool to um, expand the ends as well to obviously lock it in. So it's all quite self-explanatory, kind of work out. There's no real instructions to be honest, but I just had to work it out as I went along. And it's just a case of clamping the pipe in there, clamping it up tight, putting the right size adapter in the end of it. And uh, this sits in the end of the pipe and basically with the pipe clamped in here, you press on this using this tool here and it basically just squashes the end of the pipe, which flares it out and that is how you get your brake pipe. Um, I'll put a still image of one I've done so you can kind of see it, but yeah, quite self-explanatory, easy enough to do. But with fabricating stuff, it just takes forever, so yeah. Right, I think I'm finally just about there, done with the offside rear. This is, I know I keep saying it, this is taking so long to do, but you can see my, uh, I don't know how well you could see the um, footage because it's quite hard to shine upwards while I'm working in the area, but there's my brake pipe, look, all in position. And connected up the top there, look, with my joiner. All looking good, nice and solid. A uh, handbrake cable I've just connected up as well, so that is all connected. So. Everything on this side is all done up tight. Uh, the only thing it now requires is obviously the geometry set up just to make sure everything's in the right place. But that is something I won't be able to do anyway. So from my point of view, the offside rear is now done apart from bleeding the brakes. So now we move on to the near side rear and oh uh, God, I'm gonna put it on a one long time lapse, crack on and we'll get this in a position where the wheels can go back on and we'll try and sort out that downpipe and get the exhaust fitted.
So we are finally there. Oh, damn it, handbrake cable. Apart from the handbrake cable, we are there with the rear axle. I've the adjustable parts of the suspension, which is this bush here, and there's a bush up there as well. I have put those in the same position that the old one was in, so hopefully it shouldn't uh, it shouldn't be too far off anyway. Um, but that's just a fine to get it driving. Now we need to concentrate on the exhaust, and we have our score. Oh no, just kick me rust. Uh, now we've got my Scorpion catback system, which we're going to mate to the standard uh, cat here. And we, I do need to adjust my flexi downpipe because it's, I think it's a bit too long uh, for it to fit in properly. So by getting all this out and knowing exactly how much we need to do and what we need to do, um, it will give us an indication of how much I've got to cut off the downpipe. So let's unbox the old Scorpion catback. So I thought I'd start fitting the system from the back box. It just seemed easier that way. Get it out of the way, hanging, and then I can build up the system using the pipes, get it quite quickly to the front of the car. And that's when I realized we've got a bit of a problem. So yeah, the exhaust is a little bit different. I think with these type of systems, it's quite a generic. So it's not specifically for the Cupra. I think it also fits like the 1.8 uh, petrol and the two liter non-turbo petrol. So I think that's why it's a bit of a discrepancy. Um, but if you can see here, we've got our long mid pipe, which isn't going to fit because by the time I've got that sat roughly there, look, it's only going to need sort of about eight inches of pipe. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of fabricating with that and get an adapter that fits. So annoyingly, I won't be able to do that in today's video. But the tips are in, tips look good. Uh, the rear end of the systems looks good. Uh, yeah, just need to do that mid uh, midsection, which will be in the next video. So that is going to be end for today's video, guys. What a long one, but just look how much better the underside of the car looks now. It's probably quite hard to see because everything's black, but it obviously looks like a completely different car. And yeah, looks really good. So got my new brake pipes in, look. Ones I had to make, look. And the other one there as well. That was a nice easy join. So yeah, really happy with how the video's gone. Long old slog, but the results are worth it. So you can probably see with the uh, reflection on my face, it's been a hot, busy, long old day. Uh, in the next video, guys, we'll be finishing off the Leon, hopefully, and that'll be getting like the level sensor fitted on. Um, we have also the brakes to bleed, front disc and pads to do, the wings to do. Um, the center exhaust to fix, there's actually quite a lot to do. Um, the wings to paint, I don't know if I just said that. Um, what else have we got? So there's some other few bits on the rear as well, can't remember. But yeah, uh, maybe not gonna be finished off in the next video, I don't know, this has been a lot bigger job than I anticipated, but we are, we are getting on with it, and we are well over halfway now, so we might as well carry on. Um, so as always guys, please do like and subscribe if you like this type of video and also subscribe if you haven't already and please do follow me on save, uh, Instagram at saving underscore salvage as well. So as always guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers guys.